day ministry. But we are three years and three days late from the original invitation to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Rick Matson had invited us to speak on March 26, 2020. But we know why that didn't happen. We are happy that we could be here this evening. As Ann said, I'm Katie Anderson, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of, of the ministry. And Julie Thomas will tell you about a typical day, a typical Tuesday and Sunday day. And Ann did mention, but Nancy Seamley is going to come and talk about, from her perspective as a caregiver and now as a volunteer. But she just couldn't make it this evening. And we are happy to have another volunteer, Trish Scudder, with us, has joined us tonight. Some of you may have heard about Sunnydale already and know a lot about it. Some of you may have heard about it but are not exactly sure what we do. Sunny Day is a respite ministry for those caring for loved ones in the early stages of memory loss. Our mission is to provide respite for the family caregivers and a regular outing for their loved ones to stimulate their mind, body, and spirits in a safe, familiar environment. The original Sunny Day Club was started in 1994 and was called the Sunshine Club. The name was changed because everyone kept getting confused between Sunshine Club and Sunshine Choir. <laughs> <laughs> My mother, Gladys Blatchford, was one of the leaders who was instrumental in the birth and success of the ministry. It flourished for many years, but it stopped meeting in early 2002 when they had more volunteers than they had members. Some of the longtime members have died, and there were other opportunities for more extensive daycare in the Nashville area. Plus, at that time, the stigma of having a loved one with Alzheimer's kept a lot of people from reaching out for help. And there's still some of that today, not as much, but there's still some. A few years later, my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. After her diagnosis, my husband and I started attending Dr. Petrie's support group, which still meets here monthly at our church. Every month I heard people ask, where can I get some help? I can't get groceries, I can't go get my hair cut, I can't get any rest. Dr. Petrie would respond that we needed to turn to our churches and our communities, and that we couldn't rely on our government to take care of the situation. Each month, I felt a little nudge from God. I knew the original club had been successful and thought maybe it was time to offer the ministry again. I will be honest, I managed to ignore those nudges for some months. <laughs> I had already done volunteer work, but I had been more of a follower than a leader. Surely God wasn't talking to me. There had to be somebody else. Finally, one night on the way home from the support group, I realized that I needed to talk to someone about it. I felt like God had done more than nudge me that evening. He had kicked me. I spoke to my friend Jim Bergen, who had worked with Guam in the original club, and he was very supportive and enthusiastic. We spoke to one of our new pastors at the time, Aaron Racine, who we felt would care about the ministry, and we were off and running. We started planning in 2008, and we had our first meeting in July of 2009. I put a brief article in our Sunday Bulletin inviting people who might be interested in helping with this type of program to a meeting. I met Julie at that first organizational meeting. She was new to our church, but she was drawn to the meeting after helping to care for her mother-in-law who had Alzheimer's. I soon realized I needed someone to help me guide the rebirth and growth of Sunny Day. So I approached Julie. She did not know me at all, but she said she would pray about it and let me know. 
Happily, she got back to me and said she would read with me. We each have different gifts and we work well together. We even had breast cancer together in 2018. <laughs> That's how well we work together. <laughs> we have become very close friends over the years and I'm grateful that she also answered the call to work in a ministry that offers respite for the family caregivers. Julie and I are both passionate about the ministry and it is an important part of our lives. We started with only one person who signed up before our first day on July 14, 2009, but four people showed up and we had about eight volunteers. We believed the baseball adage, if you build it, they will come, <laughs> and they have. We had our maximum of 15 members when we had to shut down for COVID. But the social isolation was very hard on our members, and we started back with only three when we reopened on March 15, 2022. In the third week back, one had to move to a facility, so we pretty much started from scratch that summer. Right now, we have eight members and 43, soon to be 44, active members, volunteers. Rick Matson is visiting us next week, and uh, we look forward to having him join our ministry. We are working very hard to get more members, and we are hoping that maybe um, some of you might be able to suggest to some of your friends that uh, we're here. During the shutdown, we did an hour Zoom meeting each week at our regular sunny day time. That was quite the experience, and I hope we never have to do it again. <laughs> Ralph Roach and Diane Glaus, two of our computer savvy volunteers, taught the rest of us. Each week, we held our breath as we were signing on. I was so nervous. The first week we did it, I had my daughter come and sit in my living room so she could help me if I had trouble. I'm not computer weather at all. The Zoom certainly was not like being in person at the church, but it was better than nothing for the members, the caregivers, and the volunteers. It kept us connected and it gave us something to look forward to each Tuesday. It means a lot to our congregation and the church staff to have a ministry that helps families with Alzheimer's and other dementias. They are very supportive of the ministry, although they are totally, totally volunteer-led and self-supporting. We are not an item in the church budget. Sunny Day has also been an outreach and evangelism tool. We have families who have brought their loved ones to Sunny Day and ended up joining our church. They have said they felt loved and surrounded by love as soon as they walked in. One family even left their Catholic church and joined the Catholic <laughs> And we were introduced to Margaret Andrea when we were on Zoom, and she sang for us once a month. When we returned to the church, she came right along with us. She and her husband started attending, and she now is a member of the chancel choir. She has been a blessing to us, and she feels blessed to be a part of Sunny Day. It's just one of those neat God things that happens. So now I'm going to turn it over to Julie, and she is going to tell me about a typical day on Tuesday or Sunday. Well, I want you to get an idea of what it might be like to look through the window and see what we do on Tuesdays. We meet every Tuesday from 11 to 2, and uh, we miss two, day, two Tuesdays a year. We don't meet at Christmas time, but other than that, we're here every week. Katie mentioned we have 40 volunteers. Of course, they don't all come every week, and they stagger coming, and um, we, we use them all. We really do. Uh, we start, the volunteers start coming at 10, and their work uh, is to create a really welcoming environment for our folks. And they come in, and they put tablecloths on the tables and decorate it and set up an activity 
uh, circle. So our room is divided into an area where we eat lunch and do table, table activities and another area where we play. And we try to move as often as we can because we don't want to sit too long for, for them and for us too. <laughs> so um, our, our members start coming in about a quarter to 11 and our day is from 11 to two. And we, uh, we learned that from the, the original Sunny Day group had that timing from 11 to two. It's the best time if you've been around anybody with dementia or memory loss for them to be awake and to be alert and to not start their sundowning yet, which in the late afternoon is not a good time. So we, we find that 11 to two is the best time of day for, for them to be with us. And um, so they start arriving at about a quarter till 11 and they are all brought in by a loved one or a paid caregiver. Because if you come to Sunny Day, you, you're not allowed to drive yourself. <laughs> and believe it or not, some people want to do that. So they, they come in and when they first get into the building, they see a greeter who has their Sunny Day name tag on and are immediately greeted with hugs if they're a hugger and if they're not a hugger a smile and they are known know immediately that we're glad that they're there and are called by name and um, I think in my mind I wish everybody had a sunny day club to, to attend because they can come that most of them have attended meetings at church all of their life and all of a sudden there's not a place where they fit in and this is a club meeting for them to come to and be a part of where they're known, but there's no pressure. If they don't want to talk, they don't have to talk. If they don't want to play, they don't have to play. It's just a very accepting group. So um, when they do come in, we have a new station that we didn't used to have before COVID, but they come and they get another hug, but they also get their temperature taken, <laughs> which they don't really care about because we don't touch them. It's just the, the uh, touchless temperature. And we ask how they're feeling. And we feel like it's very important. We've stressed to the members and to the volunteers, if you're not feeling well, stay home. And we have uh, noticed that everybody's so kind about that. We haven't had anybody come if they're not well. And we haven't had any, any breakouts of any kind of illness. So we've been very blessed by that. It's not just COVID. We're just trying to make sure that everybody stays healthy. And um, then uh, once they get past that, they, they uh, come down to a station where we have a picture board with everybody's picture. It has all the volunteers, all the members pictures. So when they arrive, they can look on that board and they can find themselves. They can find their buddy's picture because they might not remember last week. And when they're coming, they're a little anxious. So that kind of calms them down. And then Katie helps them get their name tag on and introduces them to their buddy. And this is probably the best thing about Sunny Day. Every member that comes has their own buddy. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, and sometimes it's a two-on-one. Every now and then we have somebody that's extremely anxious, and they, they really need a little bit extra support. So when they say goodbye to their loved one, that's an anxious time, and they immediately bond with this buddy who's going to be there with them through the rest of the day, and they'll help them um, with their lunch, which, by the way, everybody brings a bag lunch and a dollar. It costs one dollar to come to Sunny Day. And um, we can't help them eat as far as feed them, but we can lay out their lunches and so they bring their lunch. And um, once they get into the room, uh, Katie welcomes everybody and we have a thought for the day and we're off to a really good start. Um, at 11.30 we have, uh, we go into our activity circle and usually start with music. and that's the best way to start the day. Everybody's um, mood is just lifted and music, as you know, reaches the souls of most everybody. And uh, we have our first Tuesday of the month, we have Margaret Andrea, which uh, Katie mentioned, she's the lady that we got connected with over Zoom. And she comes every month and sings for us as a beautiful set. She knows exactly what kind of music touches their hearts and she likes to get them to sing along and it's just lovely. Every other second Tuesday, Jeff Wood comes and um, 
usually sing some Elvis songs and gets <laughs> <laughs> and he, it's his whole goal is to make everybody smile and we're very blessed that he comes. The last Tuesday of the month we have a group called Music for Seniors. I don't know if y'all have heard of them, but they're an amazing nonprofit group uh, born out of Nashville by a woman who cared for her mother with Alzheimer's and is also a musician and knows the importance of music. So she sends professional musicians into the city and uh, she sends them into facilities and all kinds of places, usually with a charge, but for us, she doesn't charge us a penny because she knows we, we don't charge. And um, so they, we get really wonderful. We feel like we're getting a concert when they come. It's, it's really good. After, after our first uh, 1130 to 12, we have lunch. So we go back over to our table and we have lunch together. And that sounds simple, but when you're sitting at home all week long with one person, it's a joy to have sit at a table with seven people. And I don't mean just them. I had been sitting alone at home during COVID by myself mm -hmm. having lunch. And we were all just jo overjoyed to sit together and have lunch. And um, then after lunch, uh, our friend Marsha Freeland has created a, a folder that we call Table Talk. And we pull out a table talk and it's our conversation starter because sometimes when, when you have dementia, it's hard for you to be part of the conversation. But she's created these, these little uh, conversation starters that are related to what do you remember about springtime when you were growing up? Or what was your Easter growing up? What did your mother serve at Christmas? And get their memory started and conversation going. And it's, it, it's always a good conversation, but it's also fine to listen if you don't feel like talking and the buddies keep it going. Then after lunch, we, uh, well, I forgot to mention pizza day. The first, the first Tuesday of every month, we, we bring in pizza. And that's a popular day. They don't have to bring a lunch. And the caregivers are so relieved because something as simple as packing a lunch, adding that to their day is very difficult because their day is overwhelming. So um, that's a, a big day and we celebrate birthdays on that day too. But um, after lunch, we play games. We go over to our circle and we play bocce ball. We play um, um, cornhole and we just have a really good time and it gets really competitive and loud. <laughs> uh, members, we have a red team and we have a blue team and um, whichever team I'm not on is the one that wins usually. <laughs> but it's, it's a fun time. Then we then we do bingo. I mean every senior group has to do bingo I think. and um, everybody wants to win a candy bar so we have a great time with that. Some of our folks might not be able to recognize the numbers, but their buddy does, and their buddy can help them. If they, if their buddy picks up on any anxiety or any uh, difficulty, they're there to help them. If the buddy has to leave for a little bit, we have a floater at each table, so the floater moves over and is with them. So they're never by themselves, and I think uh, I think we do a really good job of making them feel comfortable. And and I will say, every now and then we do get someone who is not comfortable, and um, we tell their loved ones, if, if they get really anxious and unhappy, we'll call you, because we don't want them to be unhappy. We, we try our best to make it a good day for them, but if it doesn't work, we, we will call their loved ones. And I think they have a lot of confidence. They feel good about that. They know that, that uh, it's going to be a good day, and if it's not, they're going to know about it. So um, we play bingo and then we end our day with singing. And uh, our group has created a beautiful songbook just for us. It's an uh, enlarged words and it's uh, secular songs that are fun, like uh, on top of Old Smokey and all kinds of fun, book, fun songs. And then we close with hymns. And so it's a wonderful day. So usually they come maybe a little anxious when they leave and their loved one is picking up, uh, oftentimes they see a thumbs up from their loved one, like it was a good day. It's a totally, di they have a totally different demeanor than the, when they came in. They might not be able to tell their loved one what they did, but they know they had a good time. And that's that's what we want. And um, usually the caregivers have a smile because they've had three hours of 
alone time or they've been able to go to the doctor or um, maybe interview a caregiver. They have so much on their plate, it's just hard to know what they do with their time. And one other thing we do on the second Tuesday of the month is we have Share and Care. And it is a little bit like a support group, but it's opened only to caregivers who have someone enrolled in Sunny Day, and it's facilitated by volunteers. So um, it's not a mandatory meeting, but if they want to come for one hour while their loved one is next door and share their their circumstances and their lives with other people who understand and are going through it, they can come. We open that with a devotion and with a prayer, and then uh, everyone gets a chance to, if they would like to share, they can share a blessing that they're receiving as a caregiver, and they can share a challenge. And that's been my greatest joy is being able to be in that room and see them minister to one another and see how if one is struggling with one thing, there's almost always somebody in there that has been through that and can help each other. And, and we see as the years, as the year goes along, we see a lot of them actually leave together and they go have lunch and then they come back to pick their loved ones up. So there's a lot of friendships formed. And that's kind of where Stephen's ministry can come in too, because back when Anne was one of our volunteers, she would come in occasionally and and share with that group about Stephen's ministry. And it didn't happen a lot, but occasionally one of our folks really felt like they needed a Stephen's minister. And and when I would tell them about it, which I do every month, I have the cards out, it's not the same as having one of you all come to our group and share a little bit about who you are and that it's open to everybody. Um, and so I would like you all to think about it. If, if at some point, maybe uh, once or twice a year, you could send an ambassador to us on the second Tuesday of the month and talk to our group for 10, 15 minutes. And I, I think that you'll be surprised that um, you might come away with some people that need you. And I also want to uh, thank you. In the past, we've gotten we've gotten some members from some of you all who have been taking care of someone who who needs us too. So I think it's a good relationship and we appreciate being here tonight and um, would like to know if you have any questions. We'll Are there with. many programs around Nashville like yours? That yes. are like this, yeah. There's a program at West End Methodist, a program at Bell Bellevue Presbyterian, there is, and they're active like we are. There's another one that was started at Hillcrest Methodist, but their leader has had some medical problems and they haven't been able to start back since COVID. But hopefully they will in the future. The name Sunny Day Club is trademarked. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that <coughs> wants to have a Sunny Day Club, if they're a place of worship, a, a mosque, a temple, then we will help them do that. And um, there's just like five little things they have to agree to. They have to agree to be very reasonable in price, which we are a dollar. And they have to agree to, you know, be in a safe situation. Like we, we have safe sanctuary trainings and things like that. So there are sunny days, other, there are three sunny days in the Middle Tennessee area. We believe there's probably some other things that we are unaware of. In Hendersonville, there might be a program that's similar to ours. It's not called Sunny Day. There's never enough of them. Right. <laughs> Another question? Are the members mostly from our church? No, they don't have to be from our church. Do we have any right now? Well, Usually they're not from yeah. our church. Um, they can be from anything. What's, what's the word of mouth? How do people hear about uh, sunny day if they're, if they're not members of Bumsey. Um, a lot of times just person to person hearing about us and we have gone speaking uh, to other organizations and we've gone to the conference and uh, spoken at uh, the seminars for older adults and we've just put together an article that will be in the Encore uh, newsletter this month, I believe, talking about. But word of mouth and people uh, talking about their experiences is probably where we get the most people. 
Is your number capped at 15 then? You currently have, you said eight, I believe, yeah. uh, but it would be capped at 15 just based on your space and volunteers and... There's, there's based on our space, on the volunteers, and um, you know, we had people ask us, why don't you do it more than one time a week? But in order to not be a registered daycare, we can only meet a certain number of hours a week. We can't do certain things. We can't feed people. We can't go into the restrooms with them. And um, we can't meet so many days in a row. So the best way to do it is to have several sunny days throughout the city. And one of our members goes to all three. And we'd love to have one for five days a week so that they would have the option to, to do that. <clears throat> What is the split between the male and female numbers? Right now we have more women than we have men, which is typical. Um, more women get it. But um, we have had a couple times where we've had more men than women. So. And we always are looking for male volunteers because the gentlemen that come love to sit at what we call the gentleman's, gentleman's table and chat and visit and they just have a good time and sometimes they don't have a good time they're just grumpy because they don't like what we're doing we might do, be doing a craft and they like to complain about they don't like to do crafts but the men like to be together and so we're always looking for, for gentlemen to be part of the group they just bring a different fun perspective and uh, but uh, we don't know why we just have eight. When we first came back, we had 15. We were capped out. But um, all three Sunny Day programs have had trouble keeping their quota up after COVID, whereas before, we always had a waiting list. So um, I think being gone for two years really hurt us, and we really would love for you all to help share the word about it. It's a, it's a good program. Everybody that comes, their loved one needs to stay for one time and be with them and, and see what it's like and see if it fits. And um, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to add well, two things. Do the children still come? Mm -hmm. All the yeah, dogs. School, yeah. That's what's, the day school kids used to come, and that was the favorite for everybody. They performed, do something. It was cute. Like, it really was, yeah. it was the favorite day. Yeah. For everybody, for it, all of us. it may come back. We because of COVID, we stopped doing that because that's that's inviting twenty little petri dishes to come <laughs> 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 and it's it's sad because it was the favorite thing. And maybe we'll get back to that one one day. And then my other question is: Do you still do the memorial circus? Yes, we do. Never no, talk about that. that. Every November, right close to All Saints Day, we have our own memorial service uh, where we invite all the families from day one uh, to come back for the service and we honor all the people that have passed away that were members, um, just like we do in our, our All Saints Day with the whole church. We have power and we have a um, Jim Hughes has, we've had various speakers over the years, but it's a very, very special time. It's, it's really nice to see some of the people that we got so close to um, years ago. Um, we have one gentleman who, he was there, he was one of those four that came the first day. Dave Price is his name. We got Mary Jane with him, and he comes every year, and she's been gone for a number of years. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lovely service. So we just, we do it during uh, Tuesday. And it's only for half an hour. And, um, but it's, it's, it's nice, it's wonderful. Everybody enjoys it. They all get to take their flower home. It's, not, it's really nice. This it's, is more of an endorsement and a question. I have a neighbor that attends Sunday day. I guess he's been going about six months now, and uh, it's done, I mean, he loves it. He loves to talk about it, <laughs> and his wife has been wonderful for her. Well, good. You know, a lot of times, initially, they don't want to come, and we tell them, you know, 
come with them the first time and encourage them to come. They don't always remember it, so it takes them creating a habit to come. And once they have come a time or two, they really do usually really enjoy it. And it's just, um, when you walk in the room, you really cannot tell who's a member and who's not a member. They have, we all have name tags on. The members' names are in red and our names are in black, but that's the only difference. We really try to make it like a club. And um, so some people say, well, why don't you, uh, you could do pizza more often if you didn't do it for the volunteers, but we want everybody to do the same thing. And um, it's really important to us to, to do that. Everybody um, plays and so I'm, thank you for sharing that. I, it's nice to know that, that you're having a good experience. Do you get financial support from the church? No. No. <laughs> Have you ever asked for it? <laughs> no, no, we haven't. Um, we do uh, get a lot of memorials, and so we, we're not in the need. Actually, we're not. Um, a lot of people designate the Sunday Day Ministry for memorials, and that's where we get our, our money. Before COVID, we would use our money to um, provide a day of respite through the um, the Winfield, which was yeah. a, an adult daycare that was related to the heritage. And so once a quarter, we would offer uh, two or three people and we would rotate. We eventually get to everybody a free day at the Winfield. And that's how we used our, our money because we, we got a lot of money from uh, gifts and they closed down. And so uh, we don't have a real good avenue right now to use our money. We, we were gonna try to offer more lunch programs, but to be honest with you, the uh, lunch programs around town are not super reliable. One day our pizza got put into a DoorDash and it never came to us. And, you know, um, you know, there's some issues with uh, personnel in some of the restaurants. So so we, we don't require a lot of money. We, everybody brings their lunch and we, but, uh, we get a lot of support though. The staff comes, James Wells comes often and sings, Greg Bunn does uh, the program for us, Patsy Wade has done programs. Um, Paula, really we should put her on our, we should give her a salary. She does so much for us. And so we feel very supported by the church. Well, you have that one dollar. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of pizza. Uh, and you know, a lot of those folks, they don't put one dollar in there. They'll throw a 50 in there or, you know. Um, but our biggest thing is during funerals, a lot of people ask that, uh, that the money goes to, the memorial money goes to us. And we, we are very blessed. And those of you that know Sandy Virgin, she would always make cookies, her homemade sugar cookies. She still does. For whatever, yeah. And um, it's a favorite that she's, I mean, they're delicious, but she brought all the frosting for all the tables for everybody and all the little things. And that was just, you know, that was super sweet. And that was a, something to look forward to for everybody. Sandy or Sandy Burton. Yeah, Sandy. Yeah, she they love doing that. Uh, almost every holiday, she has a yes. cookie cutter. Yeah. They love frosting those cookies and eating them. Yes. <laughs> Trish, do you have anything to add? Anything that we missed? I think you've covered it pretty, pretty well. Yeah. I'd just like to share uh, some comments and responses from some of the, the family caregivers. And this first one is one that uh, Dave Price, the gentleman I, I mentioned, had come the first time. He said, this is the first time in over two and a half years that I have enjoyed three hours to myself while my wife was cared for. And then another um, uh, mother uh, or another daughter said, my mother lays her clothes out on the bed on Monday afternoons to make sure she is ready to go to her happy place, uh -huh. a place, the Sunday club, where she is accepted just as she is. And then the last one I thought is, although we attend other activities throughout the week, Sunday day is the cheapest 
but we come because of this event. Thank you. 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 Thank you.